Admiral's Log As the sun rises on another day of uncertainty, a new threat looms on the horizon, casting a shadow of doubt over our once steadfast resolve. The United States Navy, with its mighty task force, now stands poised to challenge our dominion over these waters. Their presence is stark a reminder of the shifting tides of war. I cannot help but wonder at their intentions. Are they here to confront us directly, to test the strength of our resolve and the might of our fleet? Or are they the pawns in a larger game, unwitting instruments of a greater power seeking to tip the scales of conflict in their favor? The thought gnaws at the edges of my consciousness, a seed of doubt planted by the machinations of war and the whispers of a suspicion that linger in the air. Could it be that the United States, the very beacon of democracy and freedom, is the true puppet master behind the resurgence of Japan, pulling the strings from afar to serve their own interests? It is a troubling notion, one that fills me with a sense of unease as I contemplate the road ahead. For if the United States is indeed the architect of our downfall, then we face a foe far more formidable than any we have encountered before, a foe that cannot be vanquished with swords and guns alone. And yet, even as I grapple with these doubts, I cannot afford to lose sight of the task at hand. The United States Navy may be a formidable adversary, but they are not invincible. With careful planning and unwavering determination, we can turn the tide of a battle in our favor, no matter the odds stacked against us. So let the enemy come. Let them bring their ships and their guns to bear against us. For we are the sons and daughters of China, and we will not be swayed by fear or intimidation. Onward, my comrades, to meet our destiny head on, to face whatever challenges lie ahead with courage and resolve. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 9. The United States fleet is upon us, led by battleship Maine, armed with 8 12-inch guns. Battleships Acor Driver, Antonio Bocaye and Martin Kunze are going to have to defeat that threat. Unfortunately, that's not the only capital ship they have. They also get the Legend, the Constellation, armed with 14-inch guns and more 14-inch guns. I believe I've fought these gentlemen before, and those 14-inch guns are only Mark II. Doesn't make them completely harmless, it just makes them slightly less worrying. They're also escorted by a whole slew of cruisers and DDs. Like, that's a lot of ships. This does seem to be a slightly older design. They are not as fast, they don't carry as many torpedo launchers, so I suspect this is a sort of remnant of the original fleet that they may have started the game with. I also have a few destroyers, but not many. These are the, well, some of the new Jinzaos, the 1914 upgrade, and they have six torpedo launchers. My plan is not necessarily to stay and stick it out against the US, because this is a lot of threat. So I might need to do a torpedo attack, deal some damage against their capital ships, sink a few cruisers, and leave. I'm not so sure if staying at the moment is going to be in my best interest. Here we go. I've already positioned my fleet in what I think might be a somewhat advantageous position. The destroyers are moving forward and to the side of the capital ship, which I believe is there. The rest of the fleet has formed up. The heavy cruisers currently more or less in front of the battleships. The battleships turning broadside, using their 13-inch guns to start suppressing whatever they happen to spot. Which at the moment, considering everything is smoked up, is not that much. So for now, we're just kind of waiting for opportunity to strike. The enemy heavy cruisers are in the back. These guns, 10-inch guns, sorry, 11.6s actually, are already opening up. But thankfully, it's an older cruiser design. And with that, not able to bring that many guns to bear. It's also sporting one of these cage masts, which is something you don't really see that often. I think they do look good. Whether they're actually good at providing targeting information, I'm not so sure. I haven't used them enough to really know that much about them. Now the DDs, 
there, of course, up front. Seeing as these are older DDs, their torpedo range is only 6.6. .6. With that, I might be able to get a couple of shots into these guys before they become a threat. And as they are pretty clumped up, that also gives me opportunities to start accidentally hitting, let's say, not the target that you're intentionally striking. As for that battleship of theirs, low fuel. It is packed to the gills with guns, as you might imagine, from an American warship. It's supporting 8 to 12 inches. It seems not to be displacing that much, but as such is not necessarily less of a threat. Because 12 inch guns, well, I suspect they're able to start dealing serious damage against my cruisers. Yeah, 23% chance to pen. Over here, zero. Because at least the Accord driver is very heavily armored and should be able to take a couple of hits. I am currently not yet in range, so we're going to have to wait for that. As for the DDs, I have not forgotten about them this time around. I'm just trying to get to, let's say, here, so I can potentially launch a torpedo attack against their capital ships, which are all in the back. These destroyers here, however, they probably aren't too eager about that little act. So for now, it's just eliminating what we can. Oh, by the way, the CL, the frontline view, um, it doesn't really have a frontline view. <laughs> It's just kind of sitting in the back. Now, what are we opening up against? CAs? Yeah, I think it's Heavy Cruiser here. All of these DDs, they keep popping in and out of view. Um, my battleships seem to be a little misguided in their attempts to try and engage the enemy cruisers and destroyers. Not the biggest priority right now. I mean, yes, it'd be great if these guys would all be able to just disappear. Um, so that my destroyers have a better opportunity to push in. But for now, we're going to have to be a little patient and potentially deal with just the cruisers that we can deal with. These heavies of mine, let's engage this. These other guys, that's the battleship, slightly in the back, I'm going to engage this. As for ammo selection, they're currently firing armor, uh, sorry, HE, which I think is fine. I think that's the best course of action. It does appear like uh, the fish burn, the winter storm, and over in the back, the lurch are kind of kiting the rest of the destroyer fleet with them, which serves me really well. It means I don't have to worry about the destroyers threatening my capital ships. But my chances of actually breaking into this formation and trying to get a torpedo salvo away, well, they're not getting any better. So I'm going to try turn around, smoke up, and just let the DDs draw some more fire while I deal with some of these cruisers. And so far, I really have done almost no damage. I may have hit a stray destroyer somewhere, but that's just about it. As for my torpedo range, it's limited on CAs. Yeah, it's only 3-7. We're not going to win a battle with torpedoes, at least not yet. Firing HE at a heavy cruiser. Firing big guns at the heavy cruiser, though. Switch to armor piercing. I think we might be able to get some work done with armor piercing. Now, those of you very observant have might might have spotted that this battleship's out of low fuel. Uh, with low fuel, it's going to be far slower. And that actually serves me really well, because it means that the target is going to be less maneuverable, more predictable. And that's what I like. Because that means I can start to plan how I'm going to take this guy down. As for all of these cruisers, they're getting far too close for comfort. So I'm going to switch the heavy cruisers and the battleships all to engage this threat now. These guys are definitely closing in, but they don't have the range just yet. And I might have a flat broadside with, for example, the Accord against this heavy cruiser. As for this guy, um, it is the same design. It's 11.6s, torpedoes on the sides. Well, it used to because they, well, some of them just got detonated. And there's the damage. 12.1 inch guns slapping the North Carolina around. Suddenly reducing her structural integrity to, well, I was going to say 7%, but now it is none. So after North Carolina, Tennessee is our next target. And Tennessee is going to have to go down just as much as the lead ship. 85 million for one of those cruisers. Now that's pretty expensive. Mine aren't that expensive. Mine are 47. So I'm wondering what sort of gear they put on this ship, because it's not speed. It's not necessarily displacement. 
Um, 19 inch torpedoes, coincidence 2 rangefinder. It's not that special. They have semi ballistic, or sorry, semi balanced rudders. They got turbines. I don't really see why these things are that expensive. If you do, please leave a comment to help me out here because I don't see it. It's not armor. It's not your guns. It's not your speed. So what is it? Good lord, these things are really getting slapped around. The battleships doing exactly what I need them to do. Now the DDs, they were disengaging from the battle. It looks like the other DDs decided not to give chase. So now I can re-engage with the DDs. As the cruisers, well at least this first cruiser group is getting completely butchered. The Huron going down. There goes the West Virginia right after it. And we got Rochester, Bridgeport, and Toledo all coming in. Uh, these guys, again, are broadside to my battleships, so let's exploit that as much as possible while the heavy cruisers slowly but steadily come around to potentially deal with the battleships. So the main would be the ideal prize. Sinking four heavy cruisers, though, is actually more valuable, at least financially, than sinking one battleship. Looks like the DDs and the CLs don't really know what to do. They're just kind of lingering. Serves me well. I can work with that. Focus on this. They are not exactly broadside on. So we're going to switch to high explosive. Uh, they are broadside to my heavies. The pen chance is... Eh, it's not quite there. Let's try and close the distance a bit. Oh, hold on. My destroyers are coming under fire. Yeah. Found the whole DD group again. And some of them are not taking kindly to James Fishburne leading the charge. That's fine. It still means that the heavy cruisers are distracted. Oh, sorry, the light cruisers and the DDs are distracted with my, well, I'm not going to say throwaway ships, but at least it's the cheapest stuff that I have around. Looks like Rochester is taking some serious damage here. Surprisingly, they've already lost 20% of their crew. But with spacious quarters, that doesn't mean much. Their damage control, main guns, and secondary guns are all still fully functional. Alright, Acor, you know what to do. It is a bit unfortunate that these secondary guns don't do that much useful stuff. Like the damage done... Well, they've added a little bit, 640 points. But, of course, they're never going to do a whole lot of damage. The Antonio Bocaya over here has done a lot. 46,000 points of damage, which is about a quarter of the total damage of the fleet. Martin Kanze, 56, and the Acor Diver, 21. Surprises me, actually. I thought these 12s would not be that effective. But they seem to be more accurate, reaching 80% accuracy. They're Mark III, much the same as the 13 inchers. Now, the DDs have not taken any damage, so I have taken some return fire, naturally. But so far, the damage is limited to 4k. If this persists, then the Chinese fleet is going to take a lot of points home. And the Americans are going to have a lot of casualties. Let's retreat this ship. I'm still somewhat at risk of getting torpedoed. Although Rochester does not have any torpedoes left. They all got detonated. Okay, now is the opportunity for AP. So slap this thing around with AP, and that should finish her. Because the amount of damage that those AP shells, there it is, can do is substantial. Now, with that ship out of the question, or out of the equation, we're going to have to fight the Bridgeport and the Toledo. They still are torpedo hazards, to some extent, and we are within torpedo range. So, definitely a threat. I think their battleships are still interested in dealing with the Danny. Just trying to retreat now. Um, it's a bit too much fire coming in. We're going to switch to the battleships with all the heavy cruisers. Put a bit of pressure on them. I'm going to slow down a couple of knots. I'm going to see if I can eliminate these last heavy cruisers and then skirmish with the battleships and the battle cruisers and ideally wipe them all out. So that's 122 million. 
And this thing was 194. Now, so far, they don't have anything to show for that 194 million warship. Because it's done no damage. It's done... Well, it's done very little against the Danny. The ship is heavily armored and should be able to come back. That is, if they don't get slapped around by another 12-inch, that does happen to hit. And they are very interested in trying to finish that ship off. Which makes total sense, it's just... I don't really have any way to defend it. Beyond, of course, eliminating the threat. Come on. Yeah, that level of flooding seems to be critical. I am interested in seeing if this is the totality of the American fleet, or if there's more on the way. Because I do believe we're going to find more ships. What the hell damaged that? You hit a battlecruiser. Constellation has taken some serious damage. Now the DDs, I still haven't forgotten about them. It's just that there's a whole lot of smoke screens around, and I'm trying to find a way into the formation, but I'm not going to have to play catch-up with these ships. It appears that these... Oh... Uh, these ships are slowed down by the main. Because the Legend can do 26 knots, and she's definitely not sailing anywhere near that fast. She's doing 13. So she's in a formation with the main. And the main cannot push. I'm probably going to get torped. Uh, well, maybe. Going to get very close here for the kill zone. But I think we're fine. It, however, exposes me to a lot of fire from these ships. Torpedo range is now becoming an interesting option here. So let's say torpedoes are allowed. And perhaps kill zone. Yep, there we go. Launching several torpedoes against the main. Uh, the Jason. Torpedo range, 3.7. Not as good. Increase speed again. We need to get rid of the Toledo, so I don't have to worry about that. There we go. Torpedoes out from the battleships. Okay, switch fire to the main. These torpedoes should not get detected by main because they don't have a hydrophone nearby. So that means that the main might suffer from critical torpedo damage. And many bulkheads will provide some protection. Anti-torpedo 2 will definitely provide a bunch of protection. But I'm not sure if the main is fast enough to actually meet those torpedoes. Bloody hell, why are my cruisers this close together? Spread out. This is one disaster waiting to happen. Increase speed to flank. Uh, kill zone. Peel off of the formation. You're going to continue... No, you're going to continue this way. Who's leading this party? The Jason. Uh, the Canyon. Peel off. Continue on your port turn. If you have torps, use them. Yeah, the Torps seemingly did not... Well, actually, no, they did connect. Dud. One hit the four belt, causing substantial amounts of damage. I think the other one was a dud. Yeah, we got two duds. Robin, keep torping. Frontline view. Smoke yourself up and bring your torpedo tubes online. There's a torpedo salvo from the Robin. I'm very surprised that none of my other ships are taking a lot of damage, but they're still focused on the Danny. They really want to get a kill. I get it, but at the moment, I got heavy cruisers so close, and even a light cruiser. I have a ton of juicy targets for them, and they're just ignoring them. At this point, this battleship is going to be in a world of hurt. Even if there's duds in there? Well, several duds? Yeah, that hurt. Main is flooding in several compartments, and her main tower has been knocked out, reducing her fire control's capabilities. Uh, and there's more on the way. Unfortunately, hitting a already flooded compartment, but that stern compartment was not. It looks like the main is well on her way down. Legend, trying to take over lead formation, is now going to be a potential target for my other torpedoes. This torpedo launcher on the canyon is reloading. I'm going to tell every heavy cruiser to cease fire. There goes the main. Well done. I've had too many ships take hits from friendlies. I think this is going to be a pretty nice thumbnail, don't you? 
I'm going to take some screenshots as I'm playing this battle, which is sometimes visible, I guess, by the flicker. Oh, we got another torpedo hit on the legend. We're destroying their torpedoes. This is an excellent trade. Wait, are that the DD shooting? Smoke yourself up. These DDs have taken so much pressure off the rest of my fleet. Now, initially, I was planning on just doing a bit of damage and not really chasing down their capital ships. But here we are. And this battle is going far better than expected. Uh, put your secondaries on the light cruiser. We're going to focus off the legend. And then we'll deal with Constellation, which has also taken some serious damage. But that was from a previous hit, I think. That's been a while. That was a 12-inch hit. Yeah. Now, this is when those secondaries from the A-Corps might be coming in very useful. Especially as the Augusta rushes in with her torpedo launchers at the ready. Need all of you to secondary fire this thing to death. Oh, my destroyers are doing damage. Nice. These guys are not popping torps yet. Um, you know what? You boys are in range. Right? It's going to be an absolute shit show for them. But that is fine. I know I'm launching torpedoes into an existing formation that probably has hydrophones at the ready. Wait, they don't? Wow. So this whole formation is extremely vulnerable to a torpedo attack. And I just happen to have those ready. Fishburn, Winterstorm, Lurch. Engage as ready. There is a lot of opportunity for disaster on their part. Okay, the Lurch has launched. Winterstorm has not yet launched. There goes Light Cruiser Augusta. Legend is almost sinking. My heavy cruisers seem mostly fine. Martin has taken some serious damage. What happened to you, sir? I need you to detach from the group and try to fall back. You need some serious repairs. What happened? You got torpedoed twice. By a heavy cruiser? A hostile heavy cruiser, I need to add. Because that's not a given these days. You're targeting the heavy... You're targeting the light cruiser. Here. Okay, let's go for the Roanoke. Um, use HE. There goes the Ellison. That's one of their DDs. Okay, we can now have launches from Lurch and Fishburn. But... I think that the first flight of torpedoes... I can even find those... Are going to just not do that much. Or they're going to disrupt this formation so much... That the rest of the ships are immediately... Well, somewhere else by the time that the threat actually arrives. The threat being all the torpedoes. Okay, the Constellation takes some serious flooding on her bows now. I'm very surprised that this heavy cruiser group is basically making it through unscathed. This could have gone a heck of a lot worse. You, light cruiser, deal with the DD. Roanoke taking some serious fire. Excellent. You can auto select your ammo. What's happening here? Henley sinks. The Henley must be the DD over there. Good damage on the Roanoke. And dead. That was massive. <laughs> Five and a half thousand points of damage. Beautiful. Okay, battleships. Finish off the already wounded constellation. Select your own ammunition choice. We have a DD sailing around here. The Willis E. Lee. I need to prioritize this threat. Because this thing is getting very close. And it's already launched against the light cruiser. Or at least it's targeting the CL now. But that launch was about five minutes ago. Wait, we hit the DD with a, tor with a torpedo? So we've been sending torpedoes against battleships and battle cruisers. Probably. And they've been kind of accidentally hitting ships far in the back. 
I have no idea where all those torpedoes ended up. They just sailed past, I guess, because I can't see them anymore. There goes the Willis. Constellation's about to meet her demise. And she is hunting down the Danny. Surprise, surprise. Which is all the way over there. Okay. Uh, kill zone. Just follow the battleships so I don't lose track of you. There goes the destroyer. And now I can push a bit more aggressively with these cruisers. I'm not terribly interested in hunting down a whole bunch of destroyers, but it has to happen. Or they will come back in another battle. The good news is, I have a lot of secondaries on the Acor driver. Um, and I'm going to have to use a lot of them. Let's see, can we have the heavy cruiser group engage this? No, we can't. It's going to have to be these gentlemen that actually take that out. And maybe the Kunzi. Uh, engage that. Try and turn with your damaged rudder. And the Acord and the Antonia are going to have to turn before the Chester becomes a massive threat with torpedoes. Which is likely to happen sooner rather than later. Time to bring the 8-inchers and the 3-inchers to bear. Range on the three inches is not spectacular. Like it's six and a half. But the threat is well within that range. Chance to pen this thing. It's got plenty of armor. There's three of them coming in. Four of them, actually. The mobile is... Uh, sorry, the mobile is right behind the Princeton here. As it stands, I'm going to switch guns. I need to switch targets. Because this is currently a bigger threat. Switch to HE. The threat's three kilometers out. We can pen. We cannot pen enough with HE. Oh. Okay. Come on, Accord. Wreck this thing. Two or three hits, and there's no further light cruiser problem. There you go. That is what I want to see here. The Davison goes down, which is over there, due to torpedo damage. All right. Constellation about to sink with 8% buoyancy left. She's still fighting, surprisingly. But look at that damage. She's done 149. That surprises me, because this is not a bad ship. Got plenty of guns. Oh, they're Mark 1 guns, not the Mark 2s. 10-inch Mark 3. Like, speed is good. Armor is sufficient for a battlecruiser. I would like to have more on mine, but this can work. There is a DD coming in. Um, kill zone. Switch to that. And these boys, switch your secondaries to that as well. Chester's in a bad state. Memphis and Mobile coming in. Torpedo in the water. Most likely targeting the Bokaye. Tony, time to turn. Acord, time to turn the other way. Acord's the flagship, if I'm not mistaken. Right? I'm not even sure who the flagship is anymore. Are you the flagship? Yeah, you're the flagship. Oh yeah, they were division leader. <laughs> they were the division leader, and then I told them not to be the division leader because they're too far away. There is a DD coming in. That is coming under torpedo attack from the heavy cruisers. <laughs> it's also tried and torpedo my heavy cruiser, but seemingly the kill zone wasn't having any of that. There goes the holder. Nice hit. Thank you for that, my dear Dallas. That was a good... <laughs> good hit. Shame it was a friendly on your part. Uh, kill zone. continue your turn. We have further torpedoes coming in. You should have pretty decent HE, right? Yeah, considering what we're fighting. This thing is still on its last legs, but... Continues to stand here, the constellation. Steady. 
Oh, we lost the torpedo launcher. Uh, kill zone. Steady as she goes. We should be able to outspeed that torpedo. Acord is in a bit of trouble here. Trying to port. Secondaries are murdering the Jacob Jones. What are you targeting with your mains? The Chester. Which is... Thinking. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess the main guns worked. Switch to the... Hold on, you're torpedoing what? Who torpedoed that? The holder was already sinking, but another DD. <laughs> yep, I think either the Dorch or the Dash Shield torpedoed the holder. Memphis takes a serious damage. There she goes again. This is going to be an absolute slaughter of the Americans. Constellation finally succumbs to her wounds. It took them long enough. Props to the damage control. The Iron War takes a big hit from the main guns of the... I think the Bukaya here, the Tony. Mobile coming under pressure next. There's definitely a lot of fish in the water here. But so far my ships are all dodging them. Oh, that thing just made a sharp turn. Mobile dead. Tony, start return. I think you're safe to come back in. What about the other heavy cruisers? They were working on the destruction of the battle cruiser successfully. So now we can take out the Bears with double S and the Thompson. And if I'm not mistaken, I have not lost a single ship. I've done 816,000 points of damage in this battle against the American Navy. Oh boy. <laughs> this is a dark day for the Americans. A very dark day. The Tony. 240,000 points of damage. And I was saying that these ships were old. Well, perhaps... But they're definitely not out of the fight. Kind of forgot about the canyon, which is now 28 kilometers away. The Danny T is safe. Yeah, I didn't lose a ship. And of course, yes, I ended up forgetting about the DDs because I was too heavy, too heavily focused on eliminating all of their DDs. I do believe my DDs did some damage. 2.9, 54k. Wow. Good damage with the main guns. So there's, what, two DDs in the CL alive. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Nice. I wonder what the Americans are going to do. There goes Dallas. Because to some extent, believe it or not, I've done them a service. They are going to have to replace a lot of their ships. And they're going to probably build more modern ships. Which should make the battle a lot more interesting. Because these one-sided attacks are not that likely to reoccur. I've done over a million in damage. I don't think I have seen that before. But then again, this is with a mod. And Brother Monroe's mod does change some things. Come on, eliminate the Princeton. Oh, you're out of HE. Well, Princeton's out of flooding capability. Buoyancy dropping at 10. Slowly building up. 11. And there she goes back to 5. Done. So. The American Navy. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. 113,000 victory points. I would call that a success. To my surprise, the Americans don't immediately sue for peace. Even though they're behind by about 143,000 victory points. Damn. Um, this is going to cause a shift. Because the Americans now have 52 ships. They did have a bunch more, but that was a largely DD fleet. So taking out a bunch of them definitely helped. 
Displacement of my fleet totals now 368,000 tons, which is pretty much on par. It's actually slightly bigger than the American fleet now. So we are definitely making progress. They're not at war with anybody else. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be very interested in talking about peace. At which point I would like to grab Formosa so I don't have to invade that. Mm, and if they're interested in giving up the Philippines, that would be all the better. For now, I don't believe we have any other big threats. There's one heavy cruiser over there. There's one DD there. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. What they got there? One DD. The Japanese are not a problem right now. The Italians are not a problem. So I'm only dealing with the Germans and I'm dealing with the Austro-Hungarians. The Austro-Hungarians actually did get some points on me, but the Germans definitely not so. And that's probably, yeah, somebody pointed this out in a previous video comment. I did gain a bunch of victory points with the Germans and at the time I didn't know why, but I took over Caucho B, uh, Bay. Um, army took that over, so it was not necessarily my doing. But it definitely helped a lot with the victory points. And I can actually decide to just surrender. Well, not so much surrender, but um, go to peace with the Germans. Because I'm not that interested in pursuing any of their territories at the moment. I'd much rather get my fleet refit. Because there is a lot of modernization to be done. Especially those ships that did very, very well. The UA phase. Um, do have a more modern version, but we're going to have to modernize them again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are on this war. Um, I look forward to seeing the Americans again, this time around with more modern warships. But we'll see what they do. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more.